Right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Development Committee. Uh, if I could just call the meeting to order, we'll make a start. Uh, can I welcome you to the committee this morning? I'm Councillor Filmer, I'm Chairman of the Committee. Uh, just to take a quick few housekeeping before we get on to the, uh, the agenda itself. Uh, I've not been advised to send any man fire this morning, so if alarms go off, then they are real. Now we need to leave the room for the uh, fire exits. Uh, for those of you in the room, toilet facilities are at the rear of the room uh, in front of me. Uh, if any of you requires uh, a drink, there is water uh, to the side of the, the hall. And if I could ask anyone, both those online and those in the room, if you've got a mobile phone, can you please make sure it's either turned off or turned to silent, just so it doesn't cut in on the meeting and interfere. Uh, just a few introductions for, for those who are with us today. Uh, to my right uh, is uh, Mrs Nicholson, who is the committee manager uh, on the, from the Democratic Services section. Uh, to my left, uh, Ms Debris, who is head of the uh, planning section. Uh, and we also have with us in the room planning officers who will be presenting their applications. We uh, will also be joined online by officers who will be presenting online, and we have support from our legal team online as well. Uh, just to remind you, today's meeting is a hybrid meeting, which basically means that we have all the councillors who will be making the decisions today and within the room, and only councillors who are within the room are able to vote and, and make those decisions. But we are also uh, on Teams so that people can view and participate uh, through, the, uh, through the internet as well. Just to, to remind you, we'll take the, the normal format of the meeting. Uh, you've got the agenda papers. We'll take the, each application in turn. Uh, they'll be introduced by the planning officer, and then those will be uh, debated after we've heard from members of the public. If we move on then to uh, the actual agenda itself, uh, item one is apologies for absence. Mr Nicholson, do we have any apologies for this morning, please? Thank you, Chairman. We've received apologies from Councillor Betty and Councillor Murphy. Thank you very much. I think all other members are present in the room. So if we move then on to item two, which is urgent business, I'm not aware of any urgent business that isn't covered by our agenda. Item three is minutes, and we have a number of minutes for, for members to uh, confirm today if they are a true and accurate record. Mr Nicholson, is there anything you wanted to update before we get on to the actual details of each set of minutes? Thank you, Chairman. We um, need to just note that on the set of minutes for November and December, Councillor Hayward was in attendance. It's not, he's not showing on there. Um, and also just to amend the wording on the statement for, about the drainage board, um, all members um, that are on the drainage board did not take part in any discussions on those applications while the drainage board were considering them. They obviously took part in the meeting here. So I think it was just, I just need to reword the uh, statement. Okay, thank you very much. Members, if we take then the, the minutes that we have before us in turn, um, we have the first one is the 17th of August. Are there any amendments that any members have to those? If not, could I have a proposal that they're a true and accurate record? That's Councillor Kingham, seconded by Councillor Grimes. Could all those in favour please show? That's clearly carried. Uh, then we move to the 14th of September. Any amendments? If not, can we have a proposal and a seconder? The same two. Okay. Uh, all those in favour please show? That's clearly carried. Uh, then we move to the 12th of October. Any amendments? Yes, Councillor Scott. Ho hold on, Councillor Scott, if you can just wait until the mic gets to you, otherwise the online can't hear you. Yes. Yep, it's on, it is on. Try again. Is that on? Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm looking at the right minutes, because unfortunately I haven't been able to get up my agenda yet. Um, but there's a statement saying that Councillor Liz Scott, it was to do with the Compton Bishop um, application. Um, ending in the 19. Um, it just said that Councillor Liz Scott was something to do with Axbridge Town Council. It should read that I'm the actual ward member. Right. Just a correction. Thank you. Okay. We can, we can do that, yeah. Yeah, okay. 
with that amendment, uh, is everyone happy that they're a true and accurate record? Uh, looking for, thank you, Cathy, for proposing. Second, Councillor Scott. All those in favour, please show. Clearly carried. Okay, 9th of November. Uh, any amendments? Again, then, we'll just can I have a proposer. Thank you, <laughs> the King, Councillor Grimes. Those in favour, please show. Clearly carried. And the 7th of December, any amendments? Not seeing any, so again, proposer and seconder, please. Councillor Glassford, Councillor Revens, all those in favour, please show. That's clearly carried. Thank you very much. And that's the minutes, and we'll find those in, in due course. Uh, next item is public speaking time. Uh, for members of the public, just to, to advise you, uh, the as I say, the format of the meeting will be that we'll take the applications in turn as per the agenda. Um, the officers will give the outline and background of the application and then we'll then call those people who registered to speak to uh, to address us. Uh, we have speakers who are both present in the room and those who are online. Uh, you will have three minutes to address the committee. Uh, those of you who are in the room will see there's a clock on the front which will count down to show you the amount of time you've got. For those of you online, we will give you a, a warning when there's one minute of your time left to go uh, so that you can bring your comments to a conclusion at that point. Item five is uh, decorations of interest. Are there any decorations? Councillor Kingham. Yes, Chairman, can I just ask a question regarding a comment from Mrs Nicholson regarding the drainage board? As members of the Drainage Board, we don't take part in any planning. Yep. It's done by the officers of the Drainage Board. Correct. Yet we still have to make a declaration. Yep. There was it, it, it was a concern that was raised at an earlier meeting that whether Drainage Board members might have been involved in some way at a, at a planning at an earlier stage. So that's why there is the general dis the general statement that none of us have taken part at that. It would then be up to members if they have for some reason been involved in maybe their own area and a planning application at drainage board level they would need to declare that and and, and make sure they weren't involved councillor facey uh, yes thank you chairman um i believe it's page 164 uh, regarding flagpoles etc i'm a member of burnham and hybrid town council but i do not attend their planning application meetings chairman thank you councillor hendry I'm on the Axe Brew, but that's already been taken care of, so no problem. Okay. Thank you. Moving down, I think Councillor Pierce. Yes, I am a member of the Parrot Drainage Board, but for um, um, applications on pages 127, 134, and 142, the Bridgewater applications, I am a member of Bridgewater Town Council, but have not taken part in any discussion. Thank you. Thank you. And again, just to confirm, anyone who's on a drainage board, we have the names uh, and they will be recorded in the minutes that they are not have not taken part, unless you tell us differently. Councillor Granter and then Councillor Haywood. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Just the same as Councillor Pierce, please, as a member of Bridgewater Town Council on page 127, 134 and 142, but took not, no part in any of the discussions. Thank, thank you. you. And if you could pass the mic up to Councillor Haywood. Hello. Uh, thank you, Chair. I too am a, a member of Bridgewater Town Council and uh, echo those uh, thoughts of, of Councillor Pierce and Councillor Granter. I have taken no part in any discussion on pages 127, 134 and 142. Thank you very much. I'm not seeing any other declarations, so I'll uh, make mine, which is again on page, I can read the paper, 157. Uh, the application in Limpsham, it's within my ward. I do attend the parish council meetings, but take no part in the planning discussions and leave the room when they are being discussed. Did you? No, sorry, I wasn't sure. Okay, sorry. Cool. Okay, for members of the public, just so that you're aware of what you just heard, it's, it's important if members have an involvement in the planning application that they declare it so that everyone is aware of that. We have a, a standing order within the committee which basically says that to avoid what's called predetermination, in effect, making your mind up before you come to this meeting, that members can either be involved as a district councillor at the planning committee or they can be involved at the town and parish level when the uh, recommendations are coming from those bodies. Um, where you've heard members declare that they've taken no part in that earlier discussion, that's so that they can come to this meeting, be part of the debate and can vote on it. Uh, I don't think we had any decorations that were personal or prejudicial, so I won't go into those. Mrs Nicholson. 
you just can you imagine to extend that yeah no problem okay so that brings us to the end of the declarations of interests um if you check your uh, for members you'll check your speakers list you'll notice that the application on page 148 has been withdrawn from our agenda today the parish council withdrew their objections and therefore it is being dealt with as a, as a delegated matter so it won't be coming before us today so if we move to our first application that we have today and mrs parsons you're going to introduce this one for us i believe please yes thank, thank you chairman i'm just going to uh, share my screen Okay, um, this is a planning application. Good morning, everybody. Um, this is a planning application for the erection of a drive through coffee shop. Um, this is located at land within the Morrison's car park um, on the corner of Broadway and Taunton Road in Bridgewater. The site forms part of the Morrison supermarket, which is on the corner of Broadway and Taunton Road. The access is off Broadway and leads south to serve the B&M to the west, as well as the supermarket and Morrison's petrol filling station. This is the layout plan which indicates the means of access off of Broadway, uh, which leads down to, to the roundabout with the B&M store to the west and then past the petrol filling station for Morrison's and then into, into the car park. This is the aerial view of the site, as you can see the car park with the Morrison store to the south. This shows the layout of the coffee shop with the coffee shop located in the top right hand corner. And then a more detailed view of the proposed building, the access and around the building together with the parking arrangement. It includes 23 spaces including um, some cycle and motorcycle parking. The pedestrian walkway is shown to remain from Broadway to the storefront, so it would still lead from the Broadway road through the site and straight down towards the shop front. This is a view of the proposed elevations of the building. It's um, advertised there as a Starbucks drive through and the building was measured 21 metres by 15 metres. It was stand at a height of four metres to the main part of the roof and seven metres to the top of the advert feature. It would be finished in vertical timber boarding. This is a view from the uh, east of the site on the other side of the uh, traffic light junction showing the approximate location of the building. And this is in the same position, but looking a little bit further down into Taunton Road. And this is closer to the site, but looking southwards along the pedestrian path that leads along the eastern side of Morrison's car park. From within the car park where that um, pedestrian access route is towards the storefront. And this is looking at the site from the west. And again, similar view, but looking a little bit further along the northern boundary of the car park with Broadway. And back to the layout, in terms of updating the agenda, Councillor Smedley has objected agreeing to agreeing with the town council's view in terms of air pollution. He raises concern about uh, the, the development resulting in another never ending queue of vehicles in an area where there is considerable traffic movement. He also is concerned that it encourages inappropriate and unnecessary car use, um, as well as an increase in litter problem, and that there's plenty of good local independent coffee shops in the town centre. Back to the recommendation, in terms of the principle of development, the site is located within the car park of a supermarket, and in a commercial built up location where it's considered that the principle of commercial development is acceptable. In terms of the impact on the character of the area, the siting of the building and associated car parking area um, is within the existing car park serving the supermarket, 
there are residential properties beyond the adjacent footpath and tree screen to the east, which front onto Taunton Road. The building would be of an appropriate size, scale and design so as not to have an adverse impact on the character of the predominantly commercial area. In terms of impact on highway safety, additional information including layout, swept path analysis of servicing routes have been provided to address the points raised by the County Highways Authority, which includes cycle parking, motorcycle parking, with regard to charging points, Morrisons have recently upgraded some of their recent parking spaces to provide charging spaces a short distance from the proposed unit. The Highway Authority did not consider that there would be any detrimental impact to the parking availability for Morrisons customers and the development being located within the existing car park would have no adverse impact on highway safety. The means of access to the drive through facility is via the Morrisons car park, which is relatively windy and not directly off Broadway. Due to its location and means of access, it's considered to be an ancillary and a complementary use to the supermarket rather than becoming a destination location. And therefore, it's unlikely to produce additional traffic other than what presently exists. In conclusion, the principle of the development is acceptable in this commercial location and would have no adverse impact on the character of the area, highway safety or flood risk. The recommendation is therefore to grant consent. Chairman, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a speaker on, on this first application, which is Ollie Thomas, the agent. And you're joining us, I believe, through Teams. So if you could just enable your microphone and just confirm that it is working for us, please. Uh, good morning, can you hear me? Yes, we can, thank you. Uh, okay. Again, just to remind you, you have the three minutes to... Hear? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, just to confirm, <laughs> are we okay? Can you hear us all right? Mr Thomas? Are they able to hear? Sorry. Yeah, just if you bear with us for one minute, um, we will... Uh, just to remind you, you have the three minutes to address the committee. Um, we. Did hear you all right so when you start that that will be fine and we will just cut in and let you know when there is one minute of your time left to go so please start whenever you're ready brilliant thank you so good morning chair members of the planning committee thank you for the opportunity to speak today um i had prepared a more detailed presentation which was submitted to the committee clerk prior to today's meeting However, in light of there being no other speakers, um, thought best to keep it to a more concise speech. Um, we fully agree with the recommendation of the planning officer and her specialist consultees who are all in support of this application. Uh, and without wanting to repeat what was said in the report, I would just like to add a couple of points. Firstly, um, the proposed development will provide a boost to local employment, both in construction and in the operation. Uh, it's estimated it will create around 15 full time employment positions drawn from the local area, um, as well as link jobs in construction and from local suppliers. We have worked with and responded to suggestions of the planning officer and her internal consultees, which uh, Shanta mentioned, with incre increasing the level of cycle and motorcycle parking and making available the use of existing electric vehicle charging points within the wider car park. To conclude, we fully agree with the recommendation of the planning officer and her specialist consultees in that the proposed development is suited, uh, sorry, is cited in a suitably accessible location. Utilising brownfield land has no adverse impacts on the amenities of neighbouring occupiers and will not result in any highway safety concerns. The proposed coffee drive through will boost local employment and support the continued vitality and viability of Bridgewater Town Centre whilst reducing carbon emissions, utilising renewable energy and reducing waste, whilst increasing recycling and diverting over 90% of waste from landfill. We very much hope that you will take these points into your decision and thank you very much and happy to answer any questions where I can. Thank you very much. Thank you. Members, any comments or questions? I have uh, Councillor Hendry has indicated. Councillor Hendry. Good morning, councillors, Jim. Uh, the town council objection, and I quote, objection due to air pollution and encouraging people to drive without care. I do not understand why they put this at all. The highways people are on board with it anyway. To drive 
without care. The, uh, the case officer pointed out that it's a windy entrance to get in there in the first place, which you can very clearly see, and I know the area anyway. How could it possibly encourage people to drive without care from the petrol station, the back of that, down that very, very short strip to the coffee shop it posed? I, I don't understand that at all, don't agree with it. The air pollution side of it, you've got all the cars in the car park and they've got them down the Broadway anyway, so that's absolutely null and void. It just doesn't, it doesn't stack up whatsoever. 15 new employees possible, as, as we just heard uh, the chap say, the speaker say. These, that type of facility uh, happens now regular in, in big car parks like this for supermarkets and so on. So there's, at this moment in time, I don't see any, uh, any reason to object to this and uh, I agree with the case officer as we stand. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Pearce. Um, yeah, the policy that doesn't seem to be mentioned at all in this is policy S4, uh, Sustainable Development and Climate Change. And just looking at the chapter on that, I, I understood using the code, uh, the local plan, which is our central point of reference, uh, about the key role planning can play in mitigating and adapting to climate change uh, that local authorities should plan for new development in ways which reduces greenhouse gas emissions. Um, we should be encouraging people to walk, cycle and use public transport rather than drive and help to reduce the need to travel and provide op opportunities for alternatives to the car. And I don't understand how this application meets those requirements. So I would be grateful uh, for a response on that, please. Okay. Ms Parsons. Thank you, Chairman. Um, th this planning application is for an ancillary and compl complementary use to the Morrison's car park. It's located within, within the car park and due to its slightly convoluted access. It's not considered that it would become a destination location itself, encouraging more people to drive or encouraging people to meet there um, for coffee, other than those that might be going to the Morrison supermarket in any case. It was concluded that this proposal wouldn't be encouraging, but would be serving people that are using their cars to gain access to the um, Morrison supermarket or or driving in some other location, so not not necessarily a car, um, and not necessarily something that would encourage the use of further transport. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Therese. Do you want to comment as well? Site, please. Sorry, go back to the aerial photograph of the site, yeah. please. So looking at the area at the moment, it's got quite a nice sort of hedged boundary um, around the existing car park, but the rest of the car park is hard standing and currently used for parking of vehicles. So potentially if the existing site is used to full capacity, that's a lot of cars going, parking up and leaving at the same time. If we can go back to the layout, please, Shanta. In terms of the layout, there is a bit of a green buffer around the edge of the Starbucks um, sort of complex. So it adds a bit of green, which is currently hard standing. And if you can go into the zoomed in view, please, Shanta. There's still pedestrian access through the car park and to Starbucks. So it's not essential that you have to drive to use the facility. In terms of location, it's not so easily accessible off of the A road that we would think that it would generate its own, own traffic on its own, but it is likely to be used ancillary to the existing supermarket. So if you were there anyway, probably in a car picking up shopping, you might swing, swing by and get a coffee. If you're there just picking up light shopping and you're close enough that you'd walk, you could also walk into the facility. So in itself, it's not considered to be a significant traffic generator but it would be ancillary to the existing um, supermarket use. And there is more green on site than what there is currently. Um, there isn't a landscape condition, but I would suggest we could impose a landscape condition to make sure we get the best value of that space if members were, were so minded. Thank you, Councillor Pearce. 
Thank you, Chairman. I would I would like to come back on, on, on the point there. I mean, this application is presented to us as a drive through. Um, therefore, it will be increasing carbon emissions. The Morrisons has a, a, a cafe of its own. So I, I'm failing to understand how how it being presented as a drive through would not encourage more traffic going through that area and therefore increasing carbon emissions. Thank you. Councillor Evans. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr Chairman. I first of all just want to echo the points uh, raised by Councillor Pierce, but I won't repeat them. Um, just moving on to policy D24, which asks us to consider whether there are reasonable grounds to suggest that a development proposal may re result in significant adverse environmental impacts. Air pollution is specifically mentioned and it's specifically mentioned in the objection raised by the Town Council and by Councillor Smedley. Um, it says that the council will require the planning application to be supported by assessments relating to air pollution. Have those assessments been carried out, please? And where can you point me to where I can have a look at them? Um, secondly, the applicant um, or the applicant's agent referred to the beneficial impact on the town centre, um, which did raise my eyebrows somewhat. And I was wondering if um, you could, if someone could explain the beneficial impact to the town centre. To my mind, it will stop people wandering into the town centre from Morrison's and using town centre shops. I th as I think the planning officer indicated, it would mostly be customers of Morrison's that would be using this and therefore it would be de detrimental to the town centre. I am somewhat confused. I look forward to the comment. Thank you. Ms Parsons. Ms Parsons, are you able to? Thanks, no yeah. worries. Um, I'm, I'm really, all I can do is really reiterate what myself and Dawn DeVries has said in terms of the view in that we're not considering that it would increase traffic generation. Um, I don't know if Dawn, you can add to that. Mrs DeVries. Um, it's not within an area of air, air quality concern for environmental health at the moment, so it hasn't been submitted with a separate air quality report. Um, and given it was considered it would be used ancillary to the existing cars using the car park, it wouldn't in itself, in officer's opinion, result in significant generation that would warrant us requesting that information. Um, but if members were concerned about that, we could defer the application, request the applicant carry out quite an expensive report to try and demonstrate how much traffic it would likely generate independently and what the impact of that would be. But given it's not in an area of risk, I, th I think this may be a little bit onerous for the applicant. Um, in, in terms of use, um, I think what was said by the applicant was that it's an employment generator um, and the likelihood is that employment would um, result in local employment opportunities. Um, again, we do tend to use um, a condition for local labour agreements. It's not on this application, but we could impose it if members wanted to see that as a benefit. Thank you. Councillor Evans. Uh, thank you. Um, I see nowhere in policy D24 where it mentions that um, uh, the a air pollution assessment needs to be carried out only in areas of particular concern. Um, I'm actually quite surprised that the bottom of Taunton Road junction with Broadway isn't an area of air pollution concern given the level of traffic that passes by there particularly um, um, mindful of the impact on that junction from, from Hinckley as well. Um, can I just reiterate the question wasn't about um, the, a, a local labour force agreement or, 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 the, or the employment generator, which is to be welcomed. My question was around the impact on town centre shopping. Um, it was clearly stated by the applicant that there would be a, a positive impact on the town centre. Um, and the suggestion from the officers was that customers from Morrison's would be going into um, we're into this this coffee chain rather than going to independent traders in, in, in the town centre. To me, that you can't have it both ways. I think to some extent that obviously, it was, as you say, it was a point raised by the agent. It's not necessarily something that the officers have raised as, a, as, as their uh, view. But I, I think it, I understand where your question is coming from and, and certainly it's something members will take into account when they come to make their decision. The, are the officers, what is the officer's opinion on the impact of this development on the town centre? 
Mr. Um, the, the officer's views as been presented through the presentation and through the response to the question so far is that it would be an ancillary facility to those already visiting Morrisons. If you're visiting Morrisons in a car, the likelihood is you're not going into the town centre anyway. But there are pedestrian connection points maintained so you could, so the choice isn't removed. Um, but the, the view of officers is it's ancillary facility for Morrisons. I have a number of speakers who've indicated I've got councillors Kingham, Haywood, Scott, Hendry, and then Grimes. So we'll move to councillor Kingham next. Yeah, just a couple of um, minor questions, really. Is this Morrison's 24-7? I know some of the Morrison's, they, they, they close at a certain time. But I'm not aware of this one. Is this 24-7? I'll, Ms. Parsons, do you? Sorry, Miss Parsons. I don't know what happened there. Um, I don't believe it is. I don't know the opening hours. There's no restriction on Morrison's opening hours, as far as I'm aware. But I don't think it's 24 hours. Councillor Kim. Um, the companies that build these, Starbucks, Costa Coffees, always travel. There are companies that come into the area, they do the work and they go. And they don't always use local labour. So I think the employment for construction is not always um, <clears throat> an ideal thing for local people. Okay, uh, Councillor Hayward. Thank you, Chair. Uh, an important consideration that hasn't been mentioned yet is that we, we have significant problems in uh, supermarket car parks in town. Um, late at night, at the weekends, and that is with boy races. And this causes serious problems for local residents. And I can't see how this isn't a very attractive destination for people like that. With loads of parking around about, I can see that even when the supermarket is closed, that it is a useful place for people to congregate. And when it's open, it's also a useful place for people to dump rubbish. Again, this is a problem that we have over by Sainsbury's and, uh, and by McDonald's. This is something that, that councillors are dealing with on a weekly basis. Um, so I, I do suggest that, um, that members of the panel consider that as, as being a real issue. Thank you. Uh, councillor Scott. Um, yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, a lot of uh, what I was going to say has already been said, and I share people's concerns over this. I travel in from along the M5, and I came off at Junction 24. I suggest everyone should go there and have a look at that roundabout. It's absolutely littered with lit litter, which is mainly coffee cups. So I don't see in here any provision that's actually insisting that you know the coffee cups that people will take away are actually recycled in a sensible manner. Um, and it's only going to increase the actual um, littering in, um, in the area. I share the concerns about the boy racers um, because um, there's no, is this going to be a 24 seven open um, place? I guess there's no provision in, in the report. I don't know whether Ms. Parsons or Ms. DeVries wishes to address both the issue of the, the issue of the litter that was raised and also the operating hours of, of this proposed site. Who wants to go first, Ms. Parsons or Mrs. DeVries? Ms. Ms. Parsons, I think is you. <laughs> um, on the background of the committee report, the hours of operation are intended to be from 5 a.m. until 11 p.m. Um, in terms of the litter, um, you could argue both ways that if, if they are taking it away with them, it's still within their car and whether they dispose of it outside the window of their car, it's sort of out of our control. Um, but that, in terms of litter, it's a little bit difficult for planning to, um, difficult to consider under a planning matter, I believe, because that that's really trying to control actions of individuals. And in terms of the boy races, I would say the same in that um, 
that is a matter that takes place presently, whether or not this coffee shop was approved or not. I, um, I've got nothing more to add on that. I don't know if Dawn de Vries has. Mrs. Vries, again, is there any provision for something like a waste management plan that could be there to say how they're going to deal with the waste that will be generated by their site? Yeah, I think in terms of imposing waste management plan, because it is a drive through, um, the nature of the drive through is you pick up the product, you go wherever you go with it. So whilst there are and can be bins within the car park area, that wouldn't necessarily um, address the waste issues for the individual users of that service. So it comes down to personal behaviours, which can't be controlled by planning. Um, in terms of, um, sort of concerns about crime, it is a private car park that's run by Morrisons and it is camera controlled. Um, so they, they would have the ability to take any appropriate action if there was any antisocial behaviour um, within the car park. But again, that falls outside of the planning control. Thank you. Uh, I've got Councillor Hendry and then Councillor Grimes. So Councillor Hendry. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Chairman. If you take McDonald's as a comparison the other side of town, Starbucks would probably just by some abstract kind of a way, take customers away from McDonald's. The people at McDonald's drive through, as, as obviously Don pointed out, they pick up their coffees, uh, whatever the case is, and they drive off. What they do beyond that is beyond everybody else's control. If they keep the empty co their coffee cups in their car or dump them home, it's beyond everybody's control. That's what they do. Starbucks would be exactly the same. Coffees, et cetera, and they drive off. Once they get off the car park, it's beyond everybody's control. It's no different to McDonald's. Moving on from that, this um, air pollution business. Again, I have to use McDonald's again. If they take the customers away, half the customers over to Starbucks, what's the difference with air pollution outside McDonald's or Starbucks? It's one and the same thing. There is no difference. Again, back to McDonald's, I keep using that as a comparison. It's the only one I can at the minute. They've got a huge car park, which serves Argos and everybody else down there. If you've got boy racers, if you want to call them that, and they go whizzing around the car park there, they can't actually do it here at Morrison's quite so easily, even if they wanted to. Because as we pointed out, when they come in by the petrol station, and come, it's a very, very, very short drive down to, to the new Starbucks, have their coffees and drive back out again. At this moment in time, I don't see a problem, and I'd like to bring forward the officer's recommendation to grant permission. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Grimes, and then I've got Councillor Revens. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Um, no, I actually agree with Councillor Hendry, um, and he, I think he's brought up a lot of the concerns um, that we, we've looked at, um, and I understand the concerns, but uh, I, as it stands, I'm happy to second the recommendation. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Evans. Okay. I'll, I'll take your guidance, Mr. Chairman. I have an alternative proposal that I was going to make, but I've been been beaten by uh, by, 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 by a short head. Um, can I have your guidance as to whether I should make that proposal now or wait until the vote? I think just check one minute. I think we're better. Yeah, that would be better for you to make the proposal. We'll still have to take the first one first, but then at least it it, it can be followed if it is seconded. Okay, um, my proposal would be that we refuse the application on the grounds of its agreement uh, against policy. Sorry, Councillor Evans, I will step in at that point because as your proposal is a refusal, that is the, the opposite of the granting Indeed. permission. So in which case, no, you don't need to make it because if the first one falls, it's... it's <laughs> that, that's why I was asking you the question. Yeah, it was just <laughs> if you were going for a, a different version of permission, then that might have meaning something. So No, no I, don't, I thought you'd have, you might have understood from the context of my previous comments well, you, that my, you never know. my proposal would not have been in favour <laughs> on different grounds. OK, no problem. So in which case, we do have a, a proposal in front of us, which is to, to grant permission as per the recommendations on your papers. That's... That wasn't mentioned, so we'll we'll go. Councillor Hendry, was that including the? I, I'm sorry, we need to have a microphone to you because otherwise no one can hear what you're saying. Sorry, I did forget to add that in. But you're absolutely correct. I did actually think about that, and yes, I agree with you. Thank you. So, so just to check, we're talking about the landscaping condition. The issue was raised, and just want to double check in terms of local labour. The comment was made that often these are done by outside contracts. So you, you still think that's something that we could 
put on as a we can impose the condition and the requirement of the the condition is, is they send specifications in terms of how they source the labor okay to encourage them to think about sourcing local first so we will strongly encourage um local sourcing but sometimes they do have a team of people but if we have the condition we have the ability to ask okay so we have the proposal then which is with those two additional conditions relating to a, a landscaping scheme and local labor that you're happy with councillor hendry and councillor grimes a seconder Okay. Councillor Haywood. Uh, thank you, Chair. With, with all due respect to Councillor Henry, um, being a, an Eastover councillor, I do know what McDonald's is like. And it's naive to think that there's no rubbish because there's rubbish strewn all over the car park. It's not just in bins outside McDonald's, it's all over. It's a constant issue and it will be an issue here, I promise you, because people don't just drive through, they buy their stuff, they sit in their cars, and that's not just outside in the McDonald's car park, it's throughout the car park, and they dump the stuff out the window. This is a constant issue, it will happen here. It won't happen if it's not there. If it's here, if it's approved, it will happen. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Members, we have then the proposals we moved and seconded to grant permission with the additional conditions. Uh, those in favour of that proposal, please show. Five. Okay, so that's five, four. Those against, please show. Two, three, four, five, six. And do we have abstentions? Two abstentions. Right, so that is that is lost. So we will be looking for an alternative proposal with Mr. Councillor Evans. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I would like to propose that we refuse this application on the grounds of policy S4, sustainable development, policy D2, the impact on antisocial behaviour, policy D24, the impact on air pollution, and policy B18 the policy on town centres. Mrs. De Vries, do you wish to comment on that at all? I, I think my plea is, can we focus what the reason for refusal is? Because the more policies you pick, the more different reasons for refusals you've got, the more costs we would be putting the applicant to for appeal, and the more likely we would be to be awarded cost against us at appeal. So if there are concerns, can we filter it down in terms of what the the actual concern is so that there's there's a reasonable chance of trying to address the concern with any future application or trying to address the concern at appeal. Councillor Evans. I have tried to summarise the concerns raised by members around the table. Um, it's difficult to narrow down those concerns at this stage. It may require some negotiation and compromise to do that. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for your guidance, Mr Chairman. I, th I think, I mean, we need to have, for the recommendation obviously to be moved and, and put forward, we need to have specifics that we are looking to def to to turn this thing down on. If if we just simply go with a general policy, that leaves, uh, there needs to be the, in effect, the detail as to why that policy is the is the concern, so. Okay, so the, under B18, it will have a negative impact on Bridgewater Town Centre. Under D24, there is no assessment of the impact of air pollution. Under policy D2, there will be a significant impact of antisocial behaviour on, um, on, on the town centre and neighbouring residents. And on policy S4, um, we, um, we're, we're contending that there will be a negative impact on the climate change agenda. Mrs. Therese. Um, if I can come back on two points. So um, S4 and D24 both look at climate change and pollution control. So I think that can be culminated into one reason for refusal in terms of insufficient information to look at the potential impacts of the development in terms of its impact on climate change and pollution issues. So that um, could look at sort of air quality reports, air quality impact as a result of the development um, as a reason for refusal. A separate reason for refusal would be B18 in terms of potential negative impact on the town centre. Um, my caution to members, if you're considering this, would just be 
given the size, scale and footprint of the development, given it's in a sustainable location and it's ancillary to an existing facility, um, just if, if you're satisfied that the scale of conflict with that policy is enough to be a separate reason for refusal on its own, I, I will leave that with you. In terms of D2 for antisocial behaviour, that's criminal activity falls outside of planning. So if it's an amenity impact in terms of size, scale, impact on neighbouring amenities because of something in the built form or, or the use, um, but concerns about potential antisocial behaviour for future users of the facility is, isn't something I think we could sustain a reason for refusal on. I, I think the other thing to bear in mind is, is with your first reason, Count Mr. DeVries, that you picked up on, that, that's a lack of information, which is something we can argue. The slight concern I would have with the impact on the town centre is how do we evidence that, and as you say, the scale? Because it's, as you know, well, as members know, when, when we do have issues with appeals, it often comes down to what's the evidence that we've got to prove the reason we've made the decision that we've made today. So it's just that balance of working out what you think is is a defendable position. Councillor Revens, and then we'll look for a seconder. Would it help if the proposal was amended to a deferral while seeking more information on those four grounds? Um, yeah, it could be deferred so we get some more information yeah. in terms of pollution and how the operator wants to manage their sort of waste on site and, and sort of try and minimise pollution impacts from future users. Um, in terms of negative impact on the town centre, the MPPF usually requires us to do a sequential test for sort of retail units slightly outside of the town centre because of potential impacts. But the footprint of any potential retail units is significantly larger than the Starbucks that's currently before members for determination. So I'm happy we could reasonably go back and get more information in terms of um, pollution or air quality or, or litter management. Um, but the, the sequential impact on the town centre, I, I don't think is something we could legitimately address. We, we can ask for a, a comment from the agent, but I don't think it's something that we'd get significantly greater information on. Councillor Evans? I think that given that the agent has made the claim that this proposal would benefit the town centre, which I think several of us have made um, surprised faces at, um, I would love to see the, the justification of that. I think going back to the agent and asking for that when it comes back to us, I think would be would be helpful for us to make our decision. Yeah. OK, so, so to confirm, we're looking at a deferral to get those extra pieces of information. I'm, uh, I'm taking That's the right. guidance of the planning officer yeah. and yourself, Mr Chairman. I will, I will change yeah. my proposal to a deferral um, requesting further information on those. But in which case, can I ask that there be a sustainable sustainability statement in terms of its climate change to substantiate the claim that this won't generate um, further traffic? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Is Councillor Pierce, you indicated. Have we got a microphone that we could pass? Um, thank you, yes, I, I will second that. But I, I would like clarification. And when we have a policy within our local plan that categorically states that we should be looking to reduce carbon emissions and we have an application before us which will encourage more carbon emissions because there will be idling. It is a drive through. It's encouraging people to drive through and on and there will be idling engines. I really don't understand how this can comply with with our policies. But for the time being, I will look forward to an answer on that and second to the deferral. Thank you. OK. Any other comments or questions? No. OK, so we have the recommendation that's been moved then for a, a deferral um, for further information to be uh, received on, on those uh, points that were raised by Councillor Evans. All those in favour of that deferral, please show. And those against, please show. So that is clearly carried, so that is, is deferred. Thank you very much. Members, if you take to the next application where we have a speaker present, and that is page 157. And we're in the parish of Limpsham. And Ms. Elvey, I think you're 
introduce this one in a moment. If you can just bear with us two minutes while we just hand over the uh, keyboard control. Ms. Alvo, when you're ready. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning, everybody. Um, so this application is before members as the officer's recommendation is contrary to the Parish Council's views. The Parish Council are supporting the application as they consider the design and materials to be sympathetic to the original dwelling's design. This slide lists the policies from the local plan that are relevant to this application. The main considerations for this application are the impacts on visual and residential amenities, highway safety and flood risk. The application site is in Easter Town, a hamlet within the parish of Limpsham and east to the main village centre of Limpsham. The application seeks consent for the erection of a two-storey extension, partly on site of an existing conservatory and will project from the side and rear elevation. The existing property dates from the early 20th century and is a two-storey, three-bedroom dwelling. Property has previously been extended and is served by a single storey side extension, two conservatories, and a lean to rear extension. This slide shows the existing floor plans to the left and the proposed floor plans to the right. The proposed two storey extension will create a garden room and dining area at ground floor with three ensuite bedrooms at first floor. This slide shows some of the site photos and the proposed elevation drawings. The extension will project on the site of the existing lean-to conservatory, which is the smaller of the two and can be seen in the top and middle photographs. This slide shows the view from the road and this photo is from Google Street View. So there's now a conservatory which isn't in this photo, um, but you can see it from the road. So whilst the proposed extension will be finished in materials that match the existing property, this is not considered adequate to mitigate for the size and scale and massing of the proposed extension, which is considered to be disproportionate in respect for the original property. The attachment to the main property is considered to be of a poor quality and exacerbates the issues relating to the visual appearance of the development. The two storey extension will not be subservient to the main property and the officer's view is that the impact on the street scene would be unacceptable due to the extension's dimensions, massing and window sizes. Due to the distance from the neighbouring properties, there will be limited impacts on other residents. However, the extension will result in a bedroom to have no access to any natural light and therefore would have a detrimental impact on future occupants. In terms of highway safety and flood risk, there are no issues. However, due to the concerns relating to the visual impact and loss of amenities for future occupants, the proposal is not considered to comply with policies D2 and D25 of the local plan, and therefore the officer's recommendation is to refuse planning permission. Thank you. Thank you very much. As you'll see, we have a speaker on this. So, uh, Peter Schwartz, if you'd like to uh, come forward to the speaker's table. Again, just to remind you, you'll see the time on the clock. You've got the three minutes and uh, start whenever you're ready, please. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Um, it's not going to be on McDonald's, so it's fine. The bedroom two, without any light, that will not be a bedroom, so that has no effect at all. The extension leads to our field, so it won't have any effect on anyone, any neighbours or anything like that. So I personally don't see why it's objective, but I'm open to any questions. OK, thank you very much. If you thank like, you. No worries, if you'd like to take your seat. OK, please. thanks. Members, any comments or questions, please? Councillor Hendry. Sorry, a quick question, quick question from Amelia. What's the, the floor dimensions of the room that's going to have, have no window, no actual light? What's that? Okay. I don't have the plans. No, right don't now, don't. No. Is he allowed to answer? You happy if we? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, if you could, if you could step to the mic and. It's going to be the new bathroom, so it won't be a bedroom. A bathroom. Okay. That's it. Will be eventually okay. once the extension's done. That bedroom will then be the okay. new bathroom. That's fine. 
Okay. The, the, the point here at all is, is a fire escape. When you get somebody in a, it's going to be used as a bathroom, the gentleman said, okay, supposing somebody was in there in the bathroom using it, there's a fire in the house. How does a person get out if they can't get out the door? Fire escapes is the most important thing nowadays. It really is. Everybody knows that. And any bedrooms or, or anything at all, by comparison, if there's a fire, you open the window, hopefully, and get out. What happens if, if this bathroom, somebody's in there and a fire started in the house? It's, um, <laughs> but that's not a good one. Thank you. Thank you. A question if I could ask, um, in, in terms of the, the sort of size of, of, of the development, are we, from, from the report, I think we're saying that there, this could be achieved in a way that would be sympathetic to the property, whereas you're just saying this is this one isn't right, but there could be an alternative that would be? Um, yes, so I think um, part of the problem is the way that the extension connects to the, the property, as you can see in the in the top slide on the screen, um, you know, the, the extension could essentially be sort of, I guess, shunted closer towards the main house. Um, so that would alleviate that um, poor connection between the extension and the main house um, and essentially could still deliver the same number of bedrooms that are desired. Okay. And again, if I could just confirm, is is this the first application? So yes. potentially if this came back with an amended plan, that mm -hmm. would be a free application to the council? If it's submitted within 12 months, yeah. Right. Okay. Any other comments or questions from members? Councillor Grimes, uh, then Councillor Bold, and then Councillor Kingham. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, after listening to uh, the debate, the small debate we've had, um, I'm happy to move the recommendation as it stands in front of us to refuse permission. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Bolt. I think I'm on now. Um, has the applicant been in, uh, in contact with the planning officers with regards to um, what you've just said about an amendment of, of a different size? Yeah, I have um, discussed the opportunity of amendments with both the agent and the applicant and offered an opportunity for revised drawings to have been submitted. Councillor Kingham. Um, I, I don't have a, a lot of problem with the extension. I think it, it sort of blends in well with the existing property. But one thing that um, I would like to know is flood zone, it's in flood zone three, and they say that there is something in provision put into Rent flooding? Can we know what that is? Um, not off the top of my head. I know that there was a flood risk assessment submitted, then the normal householder one where there's sort of a tick box exercise. Um, okay, thank you, Dawn. So the proposed floor will be set at the same height of the existing floor level, use of floodboards or similar to prevent flood water entering the building, raising of electrical sockets and electrical appliances, and use of flood resilient materials were selected in the in the FRI. To second the uh, proposal. Okay. Councillor Hendry. Thank you. I'm quite happy to go along with this on refusal, on the understanding the applicant can, uh, can amend the plans I spoke about and come back. Given that this fire risk bothers me, it really does. I don't, I don't agree with rooms with no natural window for fire escapes. So if if they came back with an amended plan to get over this problem, then uh, for me that's okay and I'm quite happy to, to go along with the other councillors. Thank you. Okay. I'm not seeing any other comments or questions. Oh, yes, I am. Councillor Scott. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chairman. I've, got not, I've not got a problem with an extension here um, and I think if um, it could possibly come back with a you know, more agreeable scheme, then I'm sure it would be passed. Thank you. Thank you. If there's no further comments, those in favour then of refusal as the plan stands at the moment, please show. <laughs> Could we just clearly show that again? That it... Councillor. Could I just double check, Councillor King, I'm not wanting to put you on the spot, but you did second the proposal, but were you voting or not voting? Okay. 
can I do that? It's in a second thing and then update to it. I can have a, there was an alternative second there, so I could go for a second. Okay. Oh, yes, sorry. Yes, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, why not? Okay, that's fine. All right, as long as you're happy, I'm happy. So that's that's 11 in favour of that recommendation. Those against, please show. Okay, and one, and any abstentions? Yeah. Thank you. That's okay. Thank you very much. So that is clearly carried in the sense that it is refused. But if I would say, please do make contact with the case officers, as you heard, there is. There is not an objection to an extension by any means, but it's just a question of sorting out that it works with the with the design. But, thank you. It doesn't take much to confuse me. Stuart said, so, right. Okay, so that's we move to then to the next application which you have, which is on turning back to page 134 on your agenda papers. We move to back to Bridgewater and it's Mr. Evans. And again, if you can just bear with us for a couple of minutes while we just change over the, uh, the keyboard. Thank you, Chairman. Got there in the end. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, this application uh, is for 130 Taunton Road, which is located to the south of Bridgewater Town Centre. The site is accessed off of Road Lane uh, and is located here on the area photograph. So it's on the left hand side as you approach Bridgewater Town Centre from the south along Taunton Road. The site is located within a predominantly residential area uh, where there are also a, a handful of uh, retail units um, both across the street and also further to the north as you approach uh, the town centre location not far from the Morrisons uh, junction. The property is a two-storey property located within a large curtilage uh, and is grade two listed. Its current use is for offices and a small playgroup area um, but this was recently sold as a property by Somerset County Council. Um, the application is seeking to change the use of the building um, into 10 service departments, which would be uh, primarily focused on the working uh, market in terms of providing accommodation for people who are working from home, uh, well, sorry, working away from home um, and need accommodation as part of their business activities. There will be very little in terms of physical alterations to the building. The layout will remain as existing in terms of the uh, massing of the property. Uh, the alterations to the building will be limited to the replacement of the existing windows, which have been damaged through uh, criminal activity um, and the in installation of a car parking area to the south of the building. Uh, there will also be uh, six spaces for charging points and a bin storage area within the site. The site itself is surrounded by a close boarded fence that borders the Taunton Road and Road Lane junctions, um, and this will be remaining in place. So this is the existing layout of the site. The access is located off the south boundary from Road Lane, which leads to a turning area, hard standing area, with gardens to the front and rear. The property is semi-detached um, and is two storeys in height with a horseshoe shape layout, um, as you can see on the plan there. This is the existing layout of the building. Um, the building is quite large in scale, um, with the existing layout divided up into individual rooms as part of the former use of the building, which was granted consent in 2001, I believe, uh, from the planning history. Uh, before that, the pro property was a residential property um, and was also used as a guest house uh, within its planning history. These are the existing elevations, um, which set out the uh, character of the building. 
um, with the primary uh, south, sorry, the primary east-facing elevation onto Taunton Road, located in the centre here. The south-facing elevation overlooks the existing curtilage and proposed parking area, with the secondary elevations located uh, on the plan there. As you can see, the layout itself of the site will change. Uh, uh, there will be minimal change to the existing layout of the site with the parking spaces located on the existing hard standing coming off the existing access here. 13 spaces will be provided for the 10 uh, letting rooms uh, and this will be uh, more than meet the requirements of the parking strategy which require one space per one bedroom, uh, one, p one unit of accommodation. As stated, the proposals will not result in a significant alteration to the layout of the building. The areas indicated in orange show the uh, limited alterations in terms of the interior. Um, so what we'll have is some additional uh, dividing walls providing for the accommodation to segregate those off from the other units, with 10 provided across the two floors. Um, as the alteration will be limited to the replacement of the existing windows, this will uh, ensure the street scene and the character of the building itself in terms of its historic setting will be retained uh, as close to existing as possible. In terms of principle of the use, the site is located in a sustainable location. Um, there is a bus stop right outside the site um, and is within walking distance of various facilities and services within, uh, within stones for the existing site as well as within the town centre, which is a short walk along the A38 along Taunton Road. In terms of the existing use, um, the site is currently uh, list. Well, the, the current use of the building uh, is for offices and as a playgroup use. Um, however, this is proposed to cease. Um, while we have had comments regarding the loss of this facility, it is considered that based upon the listed status of the building, that any reintroduction of this uh, against modern uh, building regulations would be problematic in terms of conversion, would result in significant alterations to the interior of the building. Um, and in, in itself um, would not lend itself to retaining the historic character of the building. It is also considered that there are a number of alternative facilities nearby, uh, both for nursery playgroup facilities as well as offices, um, which would be more suited to the type of use uh, cited within the report. However, it is considered that based on the layout uh, and location of the building, that the proposed resi more residential use would be uh, appropriate, albeit on a short-term letting basis. I'll take you through some slides of the existing building. So as you can see, the building itself um, has been uh, subject to neglect over the last few years, um, which has resulted in the measures taken to secure the building. Um, unfortunately, this has resulted in a number of the windows being lost um, and the conservation officer has agreed a way forward in terms of replacing those. The windows uh, that were there before were more of an 80s style, which the conservation officer considers not to be suitable for replication. So uh, an agreed method forward would be uh, agreed through uh, the listed building consent, as well as change of use, should it be permitted. This is a view taken from within the site towards the east facing elevation set back from the road within the site. This is the south facing elevation onto road lane. Um, so the property has a unique character in terms of its layout and scale, um, and it's considered that it lends itself to the proposal as submitted. This is a view taken closer of the recessed part of the building, uh, which shows the uh, route through to the rear garden area, which would be opened up along this side here and through here as well, um, all of which would allow the building to be uh, improved in terms of accessibility and appearance. The site layout, this is the proposed uh, parking area, which as you can see is already laid to hard standing. This will be the location of the proposed car parking area set behind the existing tree boundaries and fences to ensure that there will be no impact on visual amenity from the street scene. Um, as I said, the parking provisions would be above the recommended uh, requirements of the county parking strategy, but it's considered that the additional three spaces above the 10 that are required would not be uh, a reason to refuse the application. This is another shot of the proposed parking area. And this is a view from the access into the site. Um, so as you can see, the property is set back from the street scene with the proposed improvements to the windows uh, is considered there'll be an enhancement to the listed building as well as the surrounding area. 
as I stated, the Conservation Officer has agreed a way forward with regards to the replacement windows and the general uh, upkeep and appearance of the uh, listed building. It is not considered that there would be a significant impact on its setting, given its setback position um, and the proposed alterations will keep the historic layout uh, changes to a minimum, therefore respecting uh, what has gone before and, uh, and generally providing a reading of the uh, old interior as it is at the moment. This is a view taken from Road Lane. The access is on the left hand side. Again, as you come out of the site, you'll notice the building becomes less and less prominent within the street scene. Uh, this, the building is located behind the trees here, all of which would be retained as part of the scheme. And this is a view taken just to illustrate the proximity of the building to the existing bus stop um, and its position on Taunton Road is considered to be a wholly sustainable location for the proposed use that's uh, submitted. Um, with the application being supported by the conservation officer and also considered to be in a suitable location for its proposed use, the application is recommended for approval. Um, the application is also subject to a listed building application which uh, it follows on from the report in the agenda, and that is also recommended for approval based upon the changes that are, are to be made. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. As, as Mr. Evans just said, this is subject to the two applications, including the listed building, which will have the, as normal, we'll have the discussion, presentation and debate on both, but obviously the votes will be taken as, as two separate votes. Any comments or questions from members, please? Yeah, Councillor Pearce and then Councillor Facey. Can, oh yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, it's it will be good to have this building back in use. It's a it's a fine old house, and to see it looking like it does is uh, is uh, really quite um, quite upsetting, really, because I can remember it as a vibrant hub for um, children's services. So, but my my concern is uh, is around the use. It's a real shame it's not uh, been developed as some some decent housing to uh, to accommodate people who may be on the housing register at the moment. So I'm disappointed in that, but I accept that we have to consider what's before us. And just in terms of future use, how how will that be monitored? Um, just just to try and prevent potential for, um, for, for the use being abused and antisocial behaviour occurring. Mr Evans or Mrs DeVries? In terms of the future use of the building, uh, the is being used for a short term letting. Uh, so you could say it has similar uh, characteristic to holiday lets or a hotel. Um, so we felt that based upon the layout of the development and the uh, scale of the accommodation provo proposed that a condition should be uh, imposed that will actually be similar to that of holiday accommodation. So they'll have to keep an up-to-date register of all, uh, all occupants, their main addresses, to ensure that we're not looking at a um, accommodation that would be less than stellar in terms of a floor space. Because if we were looking at a building which would more easily adapt into a, into a residential use that would have uh, the required accommodation, we may not be having that conversation. But in this case, because of the, uh, because of the ambition they have for the building and its clientele that they're aiming for, um, we felt that that was an appropriate condition to ensure that it can be monitored if required. So if we get um, if we get notified that there is possibly people people staying there not in accordance with what we're recommending, then we can take a look at that and investigate and see what records they have of that. Okay, Councillor Facey. So, uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Evans has more or less answered my question. Would it be the same sort of situations we do with caravan holiday stroke bringing down scenario? As you say, there would be a register kept, and we could go in with enforcement. Yes, is yeah. that actually in the in the minute in the proposal? Yeah. Yes. Condition three of the planning application or planning recommendation is to keep a list of guests and to ensure that it's not used for primary residents. Um, I'm told by the applicants that it will be a site manager or they are operated by a management company, so they would be the point of contact if we did get uh, notified of any sort of breach of that. But yeah, we'll be looking at something similar to holiday accommodation and short term letting. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Evans, can we pass the mic down? 
Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, and I, my councillor appears very happy to see this building coming back into use. Um, uh, yeah, I, 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 those of us who, who've lived in that sort of area know know know, know its history and and, and and its previous uses. Um, my my only concern with this is around the um, amenity of the residents that will be in or in and out of there. Um, can we just have assurance about what's being provided in terms of um, uh, bathrooms and um, uh, social spaces and um, kitchens? Thank you. Thank you. Mr Evans? Yes, so each of the units would, be would have the facilities uh, for kitchenette and bathroom, so each would be provided with that. So uh, there wouldn't be any shared facilities as such. The shared facilities that it would have would be the parking area in both the gar both front and rear garden areas. So there would be outdoor amenity space within the site um, and, and within the building, there would be enough to provide for um, comfortable living, I would say, in terms of if they were looking to provide some short-term accommodation. Councillor Evans? Uh, okay, um, it's not a deal breaker, but I think a, a, some sort of communal area would be good for the mental health of the um, the, the residents. Um, however, on balance, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good proposal that I can support. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? I'm not seeing any, so I'm looking for a proposal, please. Councillor Brevens? Yeah, happy to move my officer's recommendation. Councillor Kingham? Thank you. Okay, so we've got a proposal and a second that we, to grant permission for this is for the first application, which is for the planning commission, not for the listed building status. That's the recommendations on page 140. So those in favour of that, please show. That's unanimous. And then we move to the listed building application. Am I safe to assume that the proposer and seconder are happy? Okay. In which case, we move the recommendation for the listed building. Uh, those in favour of that, please show. That's unanimous as well, so that's clearly carried. Thank you very much. And if members can turn to page 164, please. And we are in Burnham and Highbridge. And Mrs. De Vries, I think you're presenting this one. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so this is an application for some advertisements. Um, land at Brew Farm, Huntsville Road. It's in station of two billboards and two flags. Um, the application is before committee because West Huntsville Parish Council have objected to the adverts um, because they are considered to cause a distraction to passing traffic. So the main policies is listed in the report shown on this slide and the main considerations in this case because they are adverts is immunity considerations, pub public safety and any other matters. So in terms of location, um, this slide shows an aerial photograph of the site. Um, the adverts are sited in the far corner of the field adjoining Pedwa Barns, so it's indicated by the red arrow, um, and north of the land parcel, which is proposed for the school building opposite Alston Lane. So this is part of a large um, consent that members have previously seen through committee and, and granted planning permission for. So it's adverts in connection with the residential development. So this blue um, line shows the extent of the full application site for all of the um, housing. Um, and the blue, the um, blue rectangle um, is the V-shaped signage board and there's a flag proposed at either end. So if members can see, it's in this location here. So the signage boards are described as six metres um, on the application form, but it's one metre of that is below ground floor level. So it's five metres in height from ground level, um, 1.9 metres in width. Uh, the image is in muted green and grey. In terms of location, at either end of the, si the sign is a flag. So one's grey, one's green, and both are branded with the developer's logo. Um, the flags are five and a half metres in height um, and have a width of one metre by 2.5 metres, respectively. 
So the application is retrospective. So uh, the next couple of slides actually show the adverts in situ on site, um, which is to the rear of the existing bus stop, which is just located opposite Alston Lane. And this is a couple of photos showing view up and down the road. Um, so concerns were raised that the adverts are retrospective and would cause a distraction for car drivers. Uh, the signage is visible <coughs> due to the currently undeveloped nature of the site, but given the design and position and that consent um, has been granted on site, adverts are not considered to appear overly dominant or unacceptable in terms of the character of the surrounding area, and they're not eliminated, um, so not considered to result in any significant distraction. So in conclusion, um, the proposal isn't considered to give rise to any immunity impacts in terms of neighbouring properties or character of the surrounding area. Um, it's not by officers considered to result in a public safety issue in terms of distraction for drivers. Um, and the other concerns raised were that it's a retrospective application, which members are aware we can't attach any weight to in terms of considering this application. They also refer to a potential change in the plans for the background residential development and sort of concerns in terms of notification of those changes. There is a separate application running in parallel to this one for those changes. So those considerations are being picked up as part of that application and not the, the flags because the concerns have to relate to the development being proposed for. So the recommendation is for approval. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I've got Councillor Hendry and then Councillor Kingham. So Councillor Hendry. I'm going to get Brian on to you. OK. I fail to see sometimes how these advertising signs get spoken against in the first place. It's only temporary. It's not it's not going to be there forever more for all time. I actually drove past this. I know I know exactly where this etc. And it didn't distract me in any way at all driving past. Absolutely nothing. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not even sure why it's come before us. I know, I realise the parish, I know, I realise all of that, but it should never have come that far. No problem with this whatsoever. It doesn't distract anybody. It's a temporary sign. It will be taken down. No problem whatsoever. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Kingham. I can't quite agree with that. I was looking for it and I almost went across the white line. <laughs> now I know it's there, I'm happy. Um, I think when you're looking for it, it's different, isn't it? Um, I think this application, I mean, so it's a similar one we had last time for Cheddar, so I don't see the problem with this. We've laid it once, so I don't see why we should allow this one as well. So are you, are you moving the recommendation? Yes, Chairman. Thank you. Is Councillor Bolt? I just it second that. Thank you. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? In which case we have the recommendation to grant permission has been moved and seconded. Those in favour, please show. That's unanimous. That's clearly carried. Members, that brings us to the end of the applications. We've got the comfort break for about 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll come back for the reports. And there is a bit of member training as well. So um, it will be back at five past. No, should we go to say 10 past 11? OK. Right, members, I think we'll we'll start anyway. We'll move on to the, the update on the planning reports. So that's on page 188, uh, item 7.1, which is a planning appeals received. And Mrs. DeVries, do you want to take us through the next set of reports? Yeah, so item 7.1, we've um, had two appeals in. So one of them's for erection of a log cabin for holiday use, um, which is land at White House Lane, um, Loxton Axe Bridge. Um, that one was refused because it's um, in the countryside in an area of flood risk and there wasn't a justification put forward in terms of um, its location, but again under delegated. And there was a two storey and single storey extension refused at 28 Clavelshay Road in North Petherton, again refused under delegated powers. So those two are coming in um, through the planning inspectorate, so they're appealing the decision. Thank you. Any questions or comments on those? No, that takes us then to... 7.2. Um, so these are the appeals decided. So the decisions we've had back, we've had an application for prior approval um, for change of use of an agricultural building to a dwelling. Um, it was written reps. We refused it and the appeal was dismissed. So they've agreed with us that it shouldn't have been 
um, permitted as under prior approval. In terms of the next one, this one's been allowed. It was for nine dwellings um, with a new vehicle access, access off of Hamp Bridge. So the little lane that so, um, served the former um, primary school that's now no longer operational. Um, it's also in the green wedge, but we thought visually it was okay, but we had concerns about the highway access and whether it was safe in terms of potential generation. Um, what we have done in the background is we've kind of agreed with the primary school site that the generation of traffic in connection with the primary school should stick with that site and shouldn't be spread out up and down that road. So this site wasn't generating any traffic by itself. So we considered that to be um, unsafe, unreasonable, inappropriate access. Um, the planning inspector took the historic uh, position of the primary school being a traffic generating use down that lane um, to mean that there was historically a level of traffic generation for the lane and nine units wasn't considered to be a significant amount. Um, and there was a number of conditions that they imposed in terms of increasing the width of the highway, um, carrying out a structural survey of the bridge to make sure you can actually get vehicles over it and construct the site safely. Um, it, it's still a pretty poor access, but um, the planning inspector allowed it. Councillor Kingham. Oh, no. On this one, as the fact we refused it in the appeal have allowed it, is there, an, and you've agreed, is there any cost to this council on that one? No. Um, in, I think they did apply for costs, but the inspector was, was happy that, you know, we were right to have considered it, and it was only made acceptable by the conditions that were imposed by the inspector. Can you pass the mic down to Councillor Evans, please? I'm very conscious that there are possible planning applications on neighbouring sites um, on that, I was about to call it a road, I would call it a track. Mm. Um, I'm very concerned that, that this acceptance of the prior use of that school um, and the traffic that generated it was put there in Victorian times as a school. It would not have had traffic generation when it was built. The reason for moving it was because of traffic generation and mm. now that it's, it's become accepted use is that anything that we can we can influence through the planning process of maybe having having a more strategic view of the 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 developable developable land around the school to try and make sure that the access is appropriate and and we bear in mind that there are um, a number of residents around there, particularly around um, Old Base and, and so on, that are impacted by this development. Thank you. Mrs. Therese? Um, in, in terms of the application that's been allowed, it's been allowed with provision of a footway across the front of the site, because at the moment, um, if anyone's walked down there recently, it is a public um, right of way, but there's no clear distinction between any vehicles and any pedestrians. Um, they've also included increasing the width by cutting away vegetation. But it, it is always and has been a concern um, by officers and highway officers in terms of what the appropriate scale of traffic generation would be and could be by that um, lane. Uh, this, unfortunately, is the second application we've tried to refuse on highway grounds and the second application we've lost at appeal on highway grounds because they will look at the historic use of the site and they will calculate what the volume of traffic could have been served by the historic volume of the site. And then they will look at the, the traffic generation for the proposed use of the site. And if there's no real difference, um, they then look at um, sort of history records of accidents. So if we were saying that there was too much generation historically, and there's a raft of accidents that have happened up and down that lane, which meant the relocation of the school, that's a material consideration. But unfortunately, there are no traffic accident records for, for that lane about the time the primary school existed. So you know, despite local knowledge, we haven't been able to evidence the conflict. Councillor Evans. Well, indeed, the, the school staff were very proactive about managing traffic gen movements mm. at school pick up and drop off times, which um, won't apply to uh, a residential housing development. Um, you know, we are aware that that site is, is developable um, and we need a strategic approach to it, it you know, rather than, than, than this approach. You know, if we can access it through through another location, I think it would be to everyone's benefit um, who lives there currently and the future residents there. Um, and it's, it's, it, we're in a disappointing position, um, is what mm -hmm. I think I would say. Thank you. 
I'm not seeing any other comments or questions on that one, so we'll move on to the next application. Okay, the next one was at Planning Commission, um, was at Planning Committee. It was an uh, outline application for two self build dwellings with associated access and hard standing. Um, it was refused at Planning Committee, and again, the appeal was dismissed. The, so the inspector agreed with us um, that it shouldn't have been allowed in, in accordance with those policies. Not seeing any comments or questions, so if you turn over to 7.3. Okay, so this one's um, lawful development certificates. Um, so we've granted planning permission at the British car options, which is Bristol Road, for a certificate of lawfulness for the existing use of land as vehicle storage in connection with the car auction centre. So what they would have done is submitted evidence to demonstrate they've been using it for that purpose um, in excess of um, a number of years for us to find that acceptable. We've also granted um, permission for the old dairy in Cannington Road, Keenthorne, for an extension of um, sort of residential garden area for a property. And we've granted a certificate of lawfulness for the existing use of land as a residential parking area in connection with a property. Yeah, Councillor Kingham. Um, going back to the car option, I know when that came to planning, there was quite a bit of concern in regard in the lighting. So was that uh, sorted with the uh, applicant? I'm going for yes, because I think we would have conditioned it, but I'm, I'm not up to date with that site, so I can find out for you. Okay, thank you. If there's no further comments on that, we'll move on to 7.4, which is the Section 106 agreements issued. So just to give you a taste of how long some of our applications last post-resolution, um, we managed to issue land south of Holgate, Holgate Way in Axbridge, which was recently back before members. Um, because of the change of the policy position, because I think when it was first looked at, it was under the core strategy. Um, we've issued it now as a 106, so we've granted outline planning permission for 53 dwellings with 30% affordable housing. Um, then we've got Bats Farm Newton, which was an outline application um, for 33 houses, which is the last parcel of the MP1 allocation. Um, that was due to come before members at December committee, but the town council removed their objections, so it ended up being delegated, um, and we managed to issue it in between Christmas and New Year's. So that was quite a fast turnaround for the 106. Um, there is an approval of reserve matters in already because they're keen to get on site, so I'm sure that will be before members if it's not delegated. Um, and we also managed to issue Morgan House, which is the building almost diagonally opposite to... Um, Bridgewater House, it was the redevelopment of the old law library site, which is a listed building, um, amendments and extensions to Morgan House itself, and then provision of additional accommodation to the front and back of the site um, for affordable housing. So that's been granted um, through 106 now. Okay, any questions or comments on those? No, thank you very much. That's the end of the report section. We then have a, a briefing, I think, uh, we're going to give us Mr. DeVries, in terms of uh, Environmental Act. Yeah. Okay. We certainly can do. So, okay, we'll, we'll, uh, okay, that's so technically that brings us to the end of our agenda items for this morning. So, we'll close the meeting and just go into a members' training briefing session. Okay, thank you.